Hello! I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. I was just running around doing some dishes and I, I got lost track of the time. But if you're home alone for the holiday and I'm home alone for the holiday, that makes a couple of us, so we're therefore not alone. I don't know where uh, Tish is, usually. She has a sixth sense about when I'm going to be going online. Well, I want to tell you, today I don't have anything to share as far as a craft or a story or anything else because I have been running around busy. Yep, all by myself busy. And so I'm kind of grateful for what I had to fill my time with. Haven't had my Thanksgiving dinner yet tonight. Uh, today, that's going to happen tonight. And I'm going to have dinner with my daughter on Zoom. But I want to tell you about my uh, afternoon visit that was amazing. I actually visited with my children on Zoom, and um, not all of them were there, but I had uh, two of my kids, one of my grandkids, and me, and the various family dogs and, and stuff like that, and I was very nervous about it. You know how when we don't know a lot about something, and we get kind of like, I don't know if I want to do that. And I was nervous, and you don't know, oh, it's like throwing a party, and you wonder, is anybody going to come? And but they do. And so we did have a great visit. There was, there was that, you know, that awkwardness in the beginning. I, because of distance and other things, um, my daughter uh, and my one of my sons had not seen each other in probably 15 years and it's cool to see them visiting and talking and uh, it was very touching you know these days people um, move very far from each other and uh, I want to share I've got my one of my kids couldn't make it to the uh, to the visit today because he was running a marathon his family does that every year and so i have my my shirt from the year that i did it with them i walked they ran my daughter-in-law was kind enough to walk with me so i didn't have to walk alone um and it, it was it was great and it was a funny thing because you know i've been a vegetarian for i don't know well over 40 years i stopped counting at some point i think it's like 45 years or something at this point in time. I don't know. I'm not, there's, there comes a time you stop counting. But um, that year that I went to see my son and his family for uh, Thanksgiving, they had lasagna. And I went, oh, lasagna for Thanksgiving? Okay. And I find out years later that the reason they did that, now when I said to my son, oh, you're having lasagna and he goes oh yeah we don't we don't always have just the the traditional turkey thing you know we you know I'm like okay um because you know I'm a vegetarian but I still I love all the Thanksgiving sides the cranberries and the mashed potatoes and you know all that good stuff but the lasagna was fine I will say and I was with my family which was the very best and, you know, it is hard for people today. I don't know how uh, geographically close you are to your family. If you're very close to them, that can be a blessing as well as a curse. Take your pick. It can be one or the other. A lot of times, the uh, you know, you got a vision that it's going to be this, this really fun, wonderful, loving Thanksgiving, and you got your whole layout of how it's going to go. And somehow it doesn't go that way. Maybe someone uh, has to start a political discussion at the table and you got to shut that down. Maybe someone has a little something too much to drink or 
someone comes late or someone that you were really counting on being there doesn't come. So we have these great expectations of how it's going to be. And then it's not that way. So how do you know? Should I be ex excited, you know, about what's going on, uh, that I'm going to have this gathering and it's going to be wonderful? Or should I kind of like, well, don't get too excited because you never know. And with positive thinking, which is what I, I'm all about, you think, well, okay, so I'm going to be positive and I'm going to expect the best. And then if it turns out different, it's not that you're just bummed. You're like totally bummed. So always want to have, and I think I talked about that the other day, plan B. So if, if plan A doesn't work out, you've got plan B. And plan B can be anything you want it to be. You know, we have expectations and we want them to be fulfilled. And, and, you know, yet we tend to um, sometimes rely on them having it being perfect to every detail or it's not going to be any good. You know, it's going to be a lousy holiday. And so um, I do want to tell you a story today, but it's a personal story. It's a memory. And it's about when I lived in California. I think... I don't think I'd been out there that long, maybe a year or two. And uh, nobody, I was there by myself. Um, me, me, my daughter was back in Connecticut. Uh, my son was married in, in New York or something. Uh, my, other, my other kids were in Kansas City. And I was by myself. Well, one thing I used to do especially on Thanksgiving, not so much on Christmas, but on Thanksgiving every year, I would work. Back in those days, I was a bartender. It was before my minister days, but I was a bartender and I would go and give the, uh, I worked at a country club. I would give the country club uh, um, bartender, the, the regular, the downstairs, you know, there's, I was a banquet bartender, so I work upstairs. And then downstairs, there was the, you know, the pub. What do they call it? The 19th hole. And so they would always, people would go out to play golf, you know, first thing, Thanksgiving morning, they'd be out there. And uh, so I would pick up the shift for um, for the the bartender that, that was with his family because I didn't have anybody to, to have it with. And that was a really, sometimes I'd pick up the shift for coworkers when I worked for the airlines because they didn't have family. You know, they had family. I didn't. So why not? And so I learned that we can't always have it the way that we would ideally like it. If we can't, maybe we can make someone else's holiday extra special. So I am at my afternoon. Cheers my happy hour on Thanksgiving. So I'm going to have a little sip of wine. So this one particular Thanksgiving, I knew I was going to be alone. And I was kind of heavy hearted about it. And I thought, why bother? And I said that I was not going to have a Christmas treat. My daughter was in Connecticut. My kids were in the Midwest, and I was in California. My other son was in New York. So I thought, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. Whew, I got to tell you something. That was a sad feeling. There was nothing in my house that said holiday. And I looked out, and there was a little tree out on the grew in my little yard, and it was a pine tree or something similar, looked like a pine tree, same shape. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have lost the meaning of what the holiday is. And the holiday is, uh, this was Christmas. So the holiday was celebrating the birth of Jesus. And that alone is a wonderful gift because it, you know, the teachings have so enhanced our lives and helped us to be um, comfortable and, and uh, 
peaceful and have hope and joy and peace and love. So I had decided that um, I was going to do something. So what I did was I went to this really cheapy store. Uh, anybody that lives on the West Coast will know it. It's called Pick and Save. And it was a precursor to the Dollar Tree, which was even one step. Now, actually, Pick and Save was probably uh, equal to Dollar Tree because whereas at, at, um, at Dollar Tree, everything is a dollar, at Pick and Save, they started like 25, 50 cents, and they would have a dollar and five dollars, but they had those really, you know. So what I needed to do was um, I needed to decide that uh, I was going to grab some bows, and I grabbed a whole bunch of red bows, and I went out in the yard, and I decked that tree out in red bows. And when I looked at it, I did not think about how sad and miserable I was. I thought about how happy I am to have a life and a teaching and, you know, Christmas. Christmas for what it really is, a spiritual thing. Now, another, another Christmas in uh, California, I did have my daughter with me. And uh, my sons were back in the Midwest and New York and like that. And... There I was in California, and um, we were broke. <laughs> we were broke. And we went to pick and save, and we got this great big huge plastic Christmas stocking. And we found silly gifts that were like a quarter, 50 cents each for every member of the family. And we packed them all, wrapped them individually, put tags on them put them in this huge Christmas stocking, which we still didn't fill. It was like half full. We folded it over and we put it in the big box. Well, it didn't fill the box. So we decided to fill the box with popcorn balls. So we made popcorn balls. They were molasses popcorn balls. Maybe I'll share that recipe with you tomorrow. Maybe, who knows, I got the molasses. So anyway, we made these popcorn balls and rolled them in wax paper and put them in to stuff the box and sent it off. My sister called me on Christmas Day and she said, oh, we just finished opening the, opening the stocking and it was so much fun. And boy, she said, when I opened that box and the fragrance of, of the popcorn balls came out to greet us, it was magnificent. See, some of the greatest great expectations are really small expectations. The world would have us want to have everything big and fancy, but we can have it small and meaningful and special and without even costing anything. Now, years ago, after I was, when I was in seminary, I had packed up all my stuff because I wouldn't be using it for two years till I found out where I would be going to do my, you know, my ministry. So it was in California in a storage shed. So that first Christmas in, in uh, the Missouri area, I went to Unity Village in uh, Lee Summit, Missouri. And I had a little Christmas tree, but I had no decorations and I didn't want to buy a bunch of stuff. So what did I do? I went back to the red bow route. I got myself a bunch of red bows, and this time I got big old cotton balls, and I decorated my tree with red bows and cotton balls, and it was a magnificent tree I will always remember. Don't let your expectations be too great to be met. Yeah, we're home. Yeah, we may be alone, but we're never truly alone. And I'm so glad to have this little bit of time to share with you, whether that be, you know, like um, on, a, on a video right now, real time, or whether it be whenever you watch this, tomorrow, a year from now. Now, one of the things that makes holidays so great is traditions. So, if you would be willing, in the comments section, 
if you would um, want to share some traditions about like what was special for Thanksgiving in your family, what would what made Thanksgiving special for you? And if you want to add them, that's great. If you want to private message me or whatever, we can use them for another one of our visits during this uh, homebound holiday season. I'm going to share one of mine with you. Yesterday, I made stuffed dates. So you got to, you know, see how to make stuffed dates. And I was really surprised when Cheryl said, I'd never heard about that before. That was a staple. It would not be Thanksgiving for me without stuffed dates. Now, every year, I pack them up and I send them to my kids. So they get, I just, they just got their boxes and they had stuffed dates and homemade fudge and um, marzipan cookies and nuts. I couldn't send tangerines. So this is one of our family traditions. It always was special to have uh, tangerines and whole nuts. You know, when you think about some of the snacks we eat today, everything is laden in sugar and fat and carbohydrates and it weighs you down. You know, you can eat a whole mess of nuts and the oils in the nuts are very healthy for one thing. You can knock down tangerines all day. And you can eat those stuffed dates. And generally, if you eat that, it's a very balanced thing. So, I mean, that's the one thing I don't like about the holidays is, you know, when I have this bloaty feeling like, oh, my God, I remember it was right before I left, um, right before I left uh, Texas where I was serving a church there. And I came back here because my mom was coming back home and I wanted to be up here. She uh she had Alzheimer's and I wanted to be, you know, closer to my family. You know, when things start to go like that, you really start to realize how much your family means to you and how much the hugs and stuff mean. So um, anyway, I did have Thanksgiving at my friend Kim's. Now, Kim uh, is from Texas and she became my, you know, my adopted family when I lived in Texas. She worked for me at the church, plus we, we developed, you know, there's that thing that's stronger than friendship. It's kinship. So even though we weren't blood relatives, we developed kinship. So I spent the holidays with her and her family. I better call her today, as a matter of fact. So um, I ate, and I swear to you, I really tried not to overdo it. And I wound up in such pain I had to go walk around the neighborhood to try to walk it off it was and I really did try to be careful uh you know it is the traditions and the memories that we can lean on even when we don't have it working out the way we wanted today something rather miraculous happened when um, I was on my call with my grandson, my daughter, and my son, um, we were just telling family stories. And I told a story about Sammy, who is my granddaughter who passed away at the age of 27, three years ago. This is our third Thanksgiving without her. But we talked about it and we laughed. And it was a good thing. So, yeah, you might not be with your family, but you've got different kinds of family. You've got families of blood and families of choice. And they all have their perfections and imperfections. But I invite you to, if you cannot be with someone, be with the memories. Make the traditional foods. I'm all by myself, but I'm going to have green bean casserole, stuffing with fake turkey, um, maybe mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes probably because I'm kind of running out of steam, <laughs> uh, fresh cranberries and um, uh, 
I'm making, it's in the oven right now. It's one of those impossible pumpkin pies. So I didn't have to make a crust. And actually, this is hilarious. I have a crust in the freezer, but I got my mind set on quiche during the week. So I'm going to have the impossible pie. So I hope you enjoy your holiday more than anything. I hope you take some time to enjoy sharing, you know, enjoying the video with me and, and visiting with you at this time. And um, I will see you tomorrow and uh, we'll take another step on our uh, home at home alone, our historic home at home alone together. Happy holiday. We're making it a happy holiday. So I will see you tomorrow and I will have much funner things up my sleeve. Today, just a couple stories that I hope will let you know, even if you're alone, it's okay. You're never really alone. Have God bless you and the best way, two things I have advice for you today. First of all, make a list of everything you're thankful for and then make a list, or you can even start doing it, of what you are going to do to show your gratitude. Maybe share with those less fortunate. Uh, give to your church if it's a source of spiritual food for you, which you should be doing anyway. Give a little extra. They can always use it. Find how many ways. You're home alone. Nothing to do. Clean the closet. Give something to Goodwill or the Salvation Army or whatever. They will be so happy to have it. And as I'm thinking about my Thanksgiving, I'm giving thanks that you're watching this video and that we are connected in spirit and cyberspace. God bless.